Welcome to A Toast to Truth, where we share our experiences dealing with emotional, mental, and or financial frustrations in business. Do you overshare your personal life to your professional audience? This is Season 2, Episode 6, Can Being Too Transparent Ruin Your your Reputation? Today's special guest co-host is Shayla Smart, founder of Kingdom Woman Lifestyle. Hey, Shayla, thanks for coming on the episode today. Hi, thank you for having me. So before we before we jump into everything, I always like to tell people how I met my special guest co-host. So Shayla and I actually met on LinkedIn, and everyone knows that I like to pump up LinkedIn. People, it's like the redheaded stepchild of social networking, you know. <laughs> Now it's becoming like a, a a rip off of Facebook, but we won't go there. Anyway, Shayla and I met on LinkedIn, and we, you know, we communicated for a couple of years on there, and then we um, connected on Facebook, and our friendship has grown. And I've seen her, you know, evolve in business, and I know she's she's watched me as well. And so I'm excited to have Shayla specifically for this. Um, for this uh, episode because of the transition she has made in business, and we'll talk about that. But before we get to what, you know, we're doing in business and what I want you guys to know um, Shayla for, I want us to pop some bubbly. What we're going to do is kind of just share what we have um, that we're celebrating in business. So I will... Start first. Okay, so my popping bubbly moment this week is I understand and embrace my emotions because I know the benefits of letting them happen in the moment. A lot of people in business are so reluctant to cry or to laugh or to cheer themselves on or to let their you know, frustrations work themselves out. I understand that if I let the emotion happen right then and there, I'm not going to become passive aggressive in the next week towards whoever, <laughs> whoever I'm upset at or, or whatever the case may be. So I've, I'm very happy that I know that my emotions can work for me and not against me. So that's my popping bubbly moment. Shayla, you know, what's your popping bubbly moment this week? Yes, well, for me, um, it's been consistent, and it's having a fresh start. So Mm -hmm. I like to say transparency is my gold, G-O-L-D, gold. Like, it's it. That's in the pocket. And I'm able to just be myself. I'm able to attract attract my exact client, which is something that I previously struggled with in business. Um, But my ideal client just seems like they're magnetized to me now because I'm starting fresh and I'm being transparent always, um, and I just get to be me. It's less stress. I don't feel overwhelmed. I don't have to go and cry every day because I don't think I'm getting it right. I'm just being me, and doing that, I can't do anything else. Just being myself, it just comes naturally, and it makes things flow so much easier. So I'm happy and excited about just having a fresh start uh, and just being able to be me. And we did not plan this. We did not plan to have similar <laughs> similar moments here. We It was not planned. But when you have people who have great synergy, like Shayla and I have, and who, you know, are very similar, um, things like that happen. You know, like Shayla said, you, you start attracting people who, you know, just kind of fit what you need at, 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 in the season of your life. So... Today's topic can be in too transparent, ruin your reputation. To me, that is, um, I don't want to say an oxymoron, but it can and it can't. It just depends on how you play it out or how you let it play out. Um, for me, I, I don't think I overshare, 
and I got to the point where I started sharing a little bit more about myself, um, especially when I revealed that I suffered from depression for almost 20 years. Um, that was like a, a, a floodgate opening up. So many people came to me and were very supportive or they themselves had been suffering in silence and just didn't know what to do and who to talk to. Um, I know since that episode in season one, episode six uh, came out, a couple of people have told me that they've actually sought out counseling for their own depression. So me being transparent in that moment of sharing um, a battle that I had for 20 years, it really did actually help other people. So for me, I don't think me being transparent in, in that realm ruined my reputation. Um, I actually think it kind of kind of shifted my reputation in a way that I didn't expect it to, but in a way that I'm seeing that I'm helping, I'm still fulfilling my purpose of helping women. I'm just doing it in a different capacity. Um, so, so what what about you, Shayla? I mean, you've known me for a while. You probably didn't know, you know, I I suffered from. Um, depression. And for people, I don't want you to think that I'm over it, like, oh, it's done, stuff like that. There, you know, it's still bouts that come here and there, but I have gone through counseling, so I know how to uh, work through it. And if it's something I can't do with the skills that I was taught, then I can always go back um, and do some sessions with my my therapist. But, um, but Shayla, you know, you've known me for a while, and did you ever, ever pick up that I had suffered from depression or I was suffering at the time from depression? No, indeed. I, actually, just hearing you talk about it, and I've seen what you've shared online as well, but hearing you talk about it, I had no idea it had been um, that length of time for 20 years. Um, from how I know you and from your past endeavors and business, um, I would have thought completely the total opposite, and that is so <laughs> interesting um, because I think a lot of times with social media and the things that we have outlets to to show people inside of our lives, inside of our business, and what it is that we do, and they kind of, you know, people can kind of uh, create this personality of who you are, and that may be completely opposite of what's going on in your real life because we're trying to keep it strictly business or sh- you know, if we have a personal brand, um, it's just all about that personal whatever that one thing is. Um, and people never really get to know sometimes what is really going on. And I think it's awesome. First of all, kudos to you for sharing that because that's not something that people talk about, I think, enough. Uh, and especially in certain communities of people, cultures of people, it's um, frowned on and it's like, you know, keep that dirty laundry or keep that to yourself. So I never knew. Um, never would have guessed it um, before you had shared it, but I think it's awesome. Um, and I think the fact that you were transparent enough to let people on the inside of something that's very personable um, to you, that you've helped so many people open up just by what you said, how people are contacting you now and seeking counseling. Um, what if you're the only person that they ever experienced that shared that? And that's just the boost that they needed to say, wow, somebody like me um, has experienced or is experiencing this. Look, look what you did. What a turnaround. And like, I'm, 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 I'm co-hosting with you, but like, it's almost a switch. Like I want to, <laughs> I want to know more. Uh, so I'm going to have to go back and listen to that episode because, um, <laughs> That is just amazing to know just right there. We could we could be done with the whole episode just to say the fact that you shared um, through transparency something that you've experienced um, that has been a um, um, something that you've had to deal with, how that has helped other people. That's reason enough to be transparent. Um, but to answer your question on overall um, about can transparency or being too transparent be bad in your business, and you said an oxymoron, and I, I get that because it, it can be. Um, something I've learned just recently through another um, um, entrepreneur who is also a faith-based entrepreneur, she um, talked about um, bleeding all over people or um, the term that we're probably most familiar with is throwing up on people when you share 
personal things that are going on in your life or things that are going on in your business that are not the happy-go-lucky, I made money or, you know, I'm building a success in my mm-hmm. life type of thing. Um, sometimes we do that from a place where we're still healing and we're still hurt. So if you are throwing up on people or, as she said, bleeding on people and it's just like spewing it every which way, sometimes it doesn't come across um, – in a way that can be beneficial. So when you're being transparent, my belief is if you're doing it in a way that can um, help someone um, as you did um, and you were able to tell that, not to say that it's over or you're over it, as you said, but from a place of I'm stronger now than I was maybe yesterday or last week or 20 years ago, I'm getting help for this um, and I'm able to now share my experience so that others can get help. So that I consider that a healed place. Although it's not done, it's a it's a better place than where you were. So you're sharing that healed experience and now people can say, oh, wow, I can go and, you know, I can get help too. I see it worked for her. She's talking about, you know, exactly what I'm going through. So, and that benefit being transparent is is, is a great benefit. But if you're you sharing may from a place... Really- you made two really good points about, you know, the, the bleeding. I hadn't heard that. I just hear oversharing, but it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, because I've done that. And, um, you know, when you are hurting, you don't know some of the things you're doing. And and while people may not understand that and they're like, and I, and I believe in taking responsibility for your actions, and I've had to go back and apologize to people for things that I've done and said while I was hurting because I didn't know exactly what I the effects of what I was doing to those people. So I so I completely get that. However, when you're in that moment of hurting, like Shayla said, you're just putting stuff out there and, and you're not really paying attention to the effects of it because at that moment nothing else matters. You think you're doing something that's going to help your business, but actually you're harming your business. Um, And you may not feel the effects of it immediately, but you will feel the effects. Um, (laughs) Because I'll give an example. I posted something a few months ago. Um, I had worked on, you know, my new brand, um, and I wanted to send send her around mental detox. That's what this podcast is, you know, helping people deal with the emotional, mental, and financial frustrations in business. And how I'm helping people do that is teaching them how to mentally detox through journaling, right? So I'm Mm -hmm. sitting here. I had 10 people in a group, I guess you could say like a small focus group, for a whole week. They were giving me feedback on everything I was going to put out and say related to mental detox. Not even a week after I I officially put it out, this person who has been using my stuff for years decided to do a scope on mental detox to promote a writing workshop on how to write a book. How did that correlate? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm still I was so perplexed that I just went off on Facebook talking about you know. Um, imitation is not a form of flattery, and it got a lot of comments. And my sister commented with the person's initials. She was like, is this person still stealing your stuff? I'm like, yes. And I don't know how to make this person stop. And so a friend of mine called. She called me. She didn't even message me on Facebook. She called me and was like, look, I saw what you posted on Facebook. I'm going to take you to lunch because you look like you need a break. (laughs) So while I thought I was sharing a form of transparency about telling this person to stop or just telling people in general to stop taking other people's stuff, it didn't come off that way because my friend knew um, how, I guess you could see the sense the energy that was coming Mm -hmm. around what I was sharing. So Shayla said you can bleed on people. I take that as I was bleeding on people because I was highly upset. (laughs) <laughs> um, I posted that, but when you have a friend who will call you and say, hey, look, let's go to lunch, let's have some fun, you know, just kind of vent. We had a great lunch, um, and, and it was needed, and it was much, much appreciated. And, you know, she's been a really good friend of mine for years, and I'm I'm very appreciative that she saw me in that moment that I was bleeding on people and not really helping people understand that that's not okay. (laughs) (laughs) 
So, yes, I, I have been on both sides of it. I have shared where it's helped people, and I have shared where it could have harmed me if someone didn't step in and, and stop me right then and there. Yes, yes. So, um, and, you know, I, I, don't, I always tell my guests, you know, this is a conversation, so they never know what I'm going to ask them. Um <laughs> when they get on, so they're always a little nervous. But with Shayla, there's actually two stories that I have in mind that she that I would like for her to share. But I will start with one in particular because I'm not sure if the other one she would want to share. And, and as the conversation goes, if, you know, it, it comes up, we'll, we'll talk about that second story. But the first story that I want Shayla to kind of talk about um, that she and I talked about maybe a month ago was how she was transitioning from what she had started because she was building like a membership type of um, business last year. And she started transitioning into her um, kingdom woman lifestyle and where she was um, starting her I Pray movement and, and things of that nature. And so I was asking her about it, and she was just saying it was something God had always told her she needed to do, but she was she was nervous to, to put it out there. But I'll let Shayla, you know, kind of share that, because to me that's being very transparent, because to be able to actually do what you're meant to do, that takes more guts than people can even imagine. Yes. Um, I will say um, to you now, I am, I do consider myself to be like the queen of transparency because sometimes I will just tell it all and I have to remember that I have a husband <laughs> and children <laughs> that may not want everything on social media. Um, but there was a time when I, I kept secrets and I, I come from a background of what happens in this house stays in this house. Um, I am a product of many, many um, misfortunes as uh, a child. Um, and so those things were we call family secrets. Um, and so I grew up with the notion that you just don't tell everything to everybody. And I still think that has some truth to it, um, but not when um, the secret is hurting you and you can't get free from it. So um, now I consider myself the queen of transparency, and I, I bear all things. So anything that you want to ask me, Ms. Vernita, it is fine with me. Um, so um, with my membership sites um, that I had a business that I started last year, and I brought on um, a, a nice little team of women, um, and all the women had um, great business acumen, and um, just everybody brought something different to the table, and I was just gung-ho and excited about this movement. And um, let me just go back just a little bit. 2009 is my first um, intro to actually doing business online, and I started off in the gift basket industry, and just I've had so many businesses, and I've worked so many jobs outside the home. Um, started having babies, and decided the stay-at-home mom life was what um, I really wanted. But I'm um, an independent woman, and so before I was married, it was all about me making the money that I wanted to make and, you know, having the things that I wanted to have, and I didn't want to not make money like I have an entrepreneur's heart. And over time, I knew that, you know, the path that I was supposed to be on was entrepreneurship. Um, I tried many other things and other um, career paths and college and things like that, but entrepreneurship is just always – stuck with me. It's like the thing that um, I don't mind getting up in the morning for, and I'm not a morning person. <laughs> so um, <laughs> <Me> either. <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to do better because being up early is beneficial in some points. But um, so last year, 2015, um, I had this great idea to do this uh, membership-based uh, company which would benefit any woman, um, moms in particular are who I go after, but women in general um, are my heart when it comes to entrepreneurship and um, just living the life that you want, the lifestyle that you want. And so I was like, oh, I have this great idea. We'll bring women together in a group, and those who want to learn to work from home can do so. We'll do, like, many lecture courses where they can get on demand and just, you know, take this course and learn this course and, you know, learn about different things that will allow them to build a business and work from home. Uh, we'll even have an aspect to where there will be a referral aspect where you refer other women in um, every month that they're a member. They're going to get an affiliate income from that. Um, just a way to just keep the money flowing so that 
um, the biggest complaint that we hear or that I should say I hear in um, business and entrepreneurship world or staying at home is I can't make enough money or I can't make any money or I need to work from home, but there's no legit jobs. And so I've done all of that um, part of the industry. And so I just thought this would kind of bring everything together and um, solve various problems for women um, in a community atmosphere. And so it started off very good. Um, but in the midst of putting it together, I struggled. Um, and I don't even like the word struggle, but it was truly a struggle. And this is why. I was battling two worlds, basically. I was trying to figure out if I should make it faith based um, uh, because that is my first love, that is the most important thing to me in the world, or if I should just go ahead and um, just make it a general business um, with all the things that I had planned because I didn't want to offend anybody. I didn't want to keep those who may not have the same beliefs as me from being a part of this business because, again, my heart is to help women. But, again, as you just heard me say, my first love is my faith. Um, Jesus Christ is number one to me. Um, and But in, in, that, in that retrospect, I didn't want to offend anybody, and so I really struggled. I cried about it. I cried to my husband. I cried to myself. I cried to God and said, I'm not trying to compromise you, but at the same time, you know, the first thing that you teach us is love, is to love people. And I want to love on people by helping them be able to stay home with their children, um, work from home, and have the lifestyle that they want. So how can I do both without being offensive? Um, and um, I decided to go with the latter, which was to not include it or make it a faith-based thing. Uh, we still offered prayer calls during the week and motivation calls during the week, um, but that was by choice. But other than that, it, you know, you wouldn't, you know, know it had anything to do with a faith-based whatever. And that's what I chose. So it wasn't and I, at the, it wasn't exactly. other people. Exactly. And I felt that that was a good choice at the time. Um, but the more I did the business, and it, it only went for a, a couple of months, literally, maybe 90 days. Uh, but just day by day, little by little, it started chipping away as just things started to fall apart. Now, there's a great business idea. The people that I had on board, I had a team. We were having team meetings every week. We were giving away money. Um, I was paying these people um, that were on my team, um, and everybody got paid every time. Nobody ever went without their pay. Uh, but then things started to, to not click with the money. Things started to go wrong. People started to do things that made no sense to me. Um, and I'm like, well, what happened? We were such a great team. I handpicked these people. You know, people were just starting to show interest um, um, from our marketing efforts. And things were coming along slowly, but they were moving fast at the same time. But then at the same time on the internal front, for me, I'll say on the corporate side of it, which is me, you know, running the show, things are slowly falling apart and nobody knew. Um, and I had one friend, a really good friend, who was still really good friends today, that would advise me, even her husband's a very well-known um, business coach. He even came in and did some personal coaching sessions with me, which I spent most of the time crying <laughs> because I felt <laughs> misunderstood. And he was saying, well, you can't do this, you can't expect this, you can't do this in the business, and this is not a good idea, you should <laughs> These are great ideas. And I was just like, I don't understand why this is not working. And I got so frustrated. But I didn't learn a lesson. I'm, I'm going to say that. Um, and I hope it's clear and understood. I was frustrated. Things were falling apart. I finally dissolved the business, let everybody pretty much go their separate ways. Um, but I didn't learn a lesson because when we learn a lesson, we do something different. But instead of me doing something different, I dissolved that business and jumped back into what I knew and what I was comfortable with, which was coaching. Um, and I was uh, doing business coaching because I've done life coaching, but I was doing business coaching. And I said, that's what I'm just, I'm just going to focus on business coaching. A one woman business, no team, no nothing. Because at the time, <laughs> I'm thinking the team is the problem. I brought too many people in too fast. I tried to do too many things too fast. But that really wasn't the problem. But at the time, that's what I thought. But that is what a lot of people go through. I know I've done that. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I know I've done that where I felt that I moved too fast. And when things mm -hmm. unraveled, we say, oh, yes. it was because I moved too fast. It wasn't because yes. we weren't, you know, the strategy or we weren't <laughs> thinking or we were trying to force something. Oh, I moved yes. too fast, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's where I was really just, okay, I just, and you know, I was sour about it for a, a little bit. And um, for some reason in my life, and it's, I guess it's just me, I, I usually can remember a day, a week, or a time frame that I set in the pity of something or, you know, the transition time. So I think it was about three days where I was just really sad. I even had some times I was severely angry. And not at anybody, but I was really frustrated that this great business idea um, that was going to help make people money because I thought that's what everybody wanted to know, how to make money. And so I had this great 
I did, and it blew up in my face. It's how I felt, and I was so angry, and I sat in that anger for about three days, and I fussed about that to my husband and my really good friend and uh, one of the other ladies, and I was just like, I don't understand how this didn't work, and this didn't work, and that didn't work, and they should have did this, or maybe they should have been more aware of this, and I brought these people in, you know, and it wasn't the people, and to this day, I still have a relationship with each lady, you know, as far as we can talk and say hi. There's no hard feelings on my part because I understand now that it wasn't them. It was me making a compromise, and this could be for anybody. It doesn't have to be necessarily about faith, but when you compromise what you know in your gut and in your heart um, is your truth or what you know you stand for believing, when you compromise, you're going to always fail. And that's terrible to say, but it's the truth. Um, when you compromise, when you know that you, that know, that you, know, you need to stand on something, when you compromise, you're going to fail. It's never going to work. Or you're going to be miserable in doing it, which is still a failure, because you're unhappy. Um, and as humans, I've we, been there we, way we too times. I have, I have we, been there. I mean, you just made such a point that resonated with me, because uh, I've been there way too many times. I mean, in, in this season, um, Actually, uh, in the next episode, episode seven, I'm going to talk about my launch successes and failures, you know, or flops. Oh, that's going to be good. But what Shayla just said makes so much sense. Like when we're sitting here forcing something um, because we're like, oh, it's going to make money, but it's not just because it's going to make money doesn't mean it's something we have to do. And I was talking to someone the other day about that. I'm like, You know, just because you have talent doesn't mean every opportunity that comes your way is meant for your talent. Sometimes you have to let that opportunity go because it's not meant for your talent. Um, Because people are like, well, you're good at this and this and this and this and this. And then I started believing that. And I would try to do all these things people said I was good at. And I was getting frustrated and burnt out. Yep, exactly. Another reason why I created the whole mental detox um, program and everything, because I was living up to other people's expectations. I was doing things that I saw other people do online saying you can make money. Just because you can make money at it doesn't mean you have to do it. And I think, you know, for all the listeners, I really want you to get, that's what Shayla is trying to explain to you guys. You know, she was making money. I I knew some of the ladies who were in, you know, part of her program. Um, So it wasn't like she hired bums off the street, you know. (laughs) These women have successful businesses. So Shayla had, like, it was, she had the, the structure, the foundation, the everything, like she said, would, was a recipe for success. However, and I'll let her continue, however, when she gets to the part where she tells you why it it didn't work out, you will understand why maybe something's not working out for you. I didn't mean to cut Shayla off, people, but she made such a good point (laughs) because we've all been there. You know, we've all been there like, oh, yeah, I can make money, and then we start doing it. And then we have this feeling, this thinking feeling sitting inside of our stomachs, and we're like, oh, my God, I hate this. (laughs) Yes, yes. So, um, and everything you said is true, right? On what is giving me chills because I'm 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 remembering when I sat in that place in the seat. I'm actually sitting at my desk now and sat here and just was just looking like, is this really happening? How did I get here from such a great idea to just I'm miserable, literally miserable, to where I'm crying on the verge of cussing. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just so unhappy. And now I have a team of people who are depending on getting paid um, whenever they're, because there were different structures, but getting paid every uh, time they do a job or every two weeks or every, um, when it comes time for the affiliate incentives every month. And I'm like, now I've got to, I got to tell everybody bye. And it's simply because I made a bad decision. I made a terrible decision um, on my part for business. Um, and what led me to realize Um, Because, like I said, I jumped into them my business coaching, and I went through, and I won't tell the whole story on that, but I went through a phase. Now, we're going from last year into the first of 2016, January, and, you know, the new year, everybody's pumped, and I'm going to do this this year, and my year's going to be like this, and these are my goals, and these are things I want to accomplish because last year I didn't hit this, or I did hit this, and I want to do better. And so that's where I was. I had my goals set. I'm not too big on New Year's resolutions, but really on uh, the new year to me is a fresh start. So now it's time for me to do something fresh. Um, And so I came into the year 
I had a really rough year, 2015, for other personal reasons, but I'm willing to share about that. But um, And also 2014 was kind of the intro to the roughness of 2015 in my personal life. And then the business thing that happened at the end of 2015 with this company, this membership company, um, that just kind of rolled the last of the year into like a pile of, this was just, 2015 was horrible. And so coming into 2015, I'm excited for a fresh start and to just, you know, do something new. And so I'm going into my personal um, or business, not personal development, I was going to say, but um, business development for women um, who want to work from home and have businesses. And I started to attract a couple uh, people at the end of 2015 and didn't really take it serious until going into the new year. And I said, okay, this is going to be my focus. We'll let the other company go. Um, and so coming into 2016, I'm excited. I'm gung-ho. Got a new business coach that I pay for out of pocket, and I'm still paying her. Um, and then I went on family vacation to California in February. I also went to see my business coach while in California to a um, one-day intensive. And so I'm ready to rock. going to come back from California, ready to do, you know, above what I could even imagine. And so I came back in February, um, had a client already. I did have a client, so I was, you know, being paid uh, monthly for my client and um, was, you know, working on getting new clients. And so I came back from California, and I'm just excited and said, I'm just going to get this business going. And I tell you, it wasn't, I don't even think a week when I came back from California to my spirit just completely dropped. Like, I, I, I can't even explain what happened. I just felt like, what am I doing? And why am I doing this? I'm not happy. I'm it's stressed. Like the I'm overwhelmed. It's yes. like a waste call. It's like a waste call. Because I, I didn't have, learn the I lesson. I have that this year, too. <laughs> <laughs> see, I didn't learn the lesson for 2015. <laughs> see, people are not listening. Like, Shayla is giving y'all the truth here. Like, I don't know how many times I had to repeat a lesson before it finally clicked yes. myself. I've been yes. there. But I had my wake-up call this year, too. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to let Shayla finish. But Shayla is like it's like we're our our little business worlds are parallel right now. <laughs> and it, it was just so, and it was really, um, and now I can laugh about it. But I promise you, I wasn't laughing then because not only have I invested in a, in a coach that I can now really, I mean, I guess some people would say you can still use her because I'm still in business. I'm still an entrepreneur. That's my heart. And I really truly believe without a shadow of a doubt, entrepreneurship is my calling. It was just the way I was going about it that was wrong. So um, mm-hmm. you may be doing what you feel is your heart and your purpose in life because we all have a purpose in life, regardless of your belief or whatever. You're here for a reason, and it's not just to look cute. Um, but if you, if you're not, if you're not flowing in that, um, for whatever, I'm just going to say department you're supposed to be in or industry you're supposed to be in, it's not going to matter. Entrepreneurship can be it, but you can be doing it wrong. I guess is how I want to say it. Ooh, um, and yeah, I was doing it wrong. I'm, I'm supposed to be an entrepreneur. That's it. Cause I can't work a job because I have a problem with, you get a 30 minute lunch break and after lunch, they don't let you take a nap. Like I have a problem with that on the job. Girl, I'm I unemployable. <laughs> I talk exactly. back, like, you know, I'm unemployable. <laughs> I talk back, and it just doesn't go well, and we're having a stare down contest. Like, I had one boss. I'm I'm working at this college. I'm leaving his office because he wants me to move outside of the classroom into, I guess, um, more of a leadership position. I don't, I'm not really feeling it. I'm like, whatever, because I already <laughs> said in my mind, I'm leaving at a certain date. They just didn't know. I'm walking yeah. down the hallway, and he calls me by my first name, and I turned around and stared at him. The whole hallway just froze. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brainy. I'm like, correct. We not cool like that for you to call me by my first name. <laughs> you don't know me like that. Yeah, so, yes, I, I, I completely feel you on that because – I don't I don't do too well in, in the workplace because I'm always seeing what's going wrong and I try to come up with suggestions to make it run more efficiently yes. and I don't want to hear it. And I'm sitting here like, so we supposed to all fail? Like yes. I can't be on this ship. We I we can't all fail. Like that's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, so. Goodness. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so just in just in retrospect now, like I said, I can laugh about it now. It's all he he and ha ha. But it wasn't then. But this second time around, like I, I tell people all the time, my husband laughs at me. I said I'm not a slow leak. I catch on pretty well. Now there's some jokes and things out there that may take me a couple times to get. But for the most part, I don't think I'm. You know, I, I learn pretty quickly. And so this second time around, it was just all about me being stubborn and just you know trying to do it my way. So this. 
time when I started to feel like, okay, February, I came back from the trip, and we're going into March because it's the end of February. And I'm just like, I just don't feel this. And now my husband, bless his heart, who supports me in everything I do, any business endeavors, my stay-at-home adventures, any business I've ever tried, he's always, you know, been the backbone to it. And so I'm telling him, you know, this is crazy. Like, I just feel some type of weight. But wait, you just came from a business intensive that you paid to go to. You just signed up for this coach that you're, you know, paying for. And he didn't say any of that. This is me saying, like, in my mind, like, I have to tell him, like, this is not working. Um, but I just did all these things. Like, what do you mean it's not working? It's what I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be the response. And he got it, though. He understood. And I said, you know, I figured it out. I sat down and cried again because um, I was so frustrated. And I cried for um, three days. And I was just kind of out of it for two weeks, just out of it, meaning like I didn't do business. I didn't really get online and say much about anything. It was just kind of like I disappeared um, in the business realm. I talked about everything but business. <laughs> like, wait a minute, what happened to, you know, hey, you're a great coach. And, you know, I had these groups on Facebook that I wasn't even participating in. or And these are my own personal groups um, that I have of people coming to me for business advice and things. And I wasn't doing anything. You know, and I said, you got to make a decision. You got to do something. And I said, but I don't know what to do. I don't feel like doing this anymore. I don't feel that I'm in the right space. So I don't know what to do at this point. And, um, that's when I sat down and I said, God, you got to help me. Now, mind you, faith-based, been in church since I was a little girl, four years old. Um, you know, I've had my trials, my ups and downs, but God has always been number one in my life. But being number one to me and um, having a relationship are two different things. We, you know, being a Christian and having a relationship, two different things. So at this point, I was just being a Christian. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop, Shayla, for just a second so we can take a sip. And because uh, I, I want her to finish because the ending to, to this story is, is something that, you know, maybe your wake-up call in business. So we're going to stop. We're going to take a sip. And then we'll come back with Shayla sharing her um, amazing story. Ready to face the truth in your business? Schedule a truth power session. I act as your sounding board, giving you feedback, critiques, suggestions, while teaching you how to mentally detox using journaling. Go to VernettaRFrenny.com backslash truth confidant and don't forget to pre-order your the truth confidant journal okay so we're back i i just didn't want to stop the story because it's it's so many golden nuggets that that shayla is sharing and i like that she's given a timeline because some people may uh, if you didn't give the timeline, Shayla, some people may have thought, oh, this was just happening in the span of a couple of weeks or a couple of months, right? But remember, yeah. <laughs> she started in 2009. She gave us that as her first date. And then when things really started taking a change was 2014. So now we're in 2016. So I want people to understand that entrepreneurship is a journey. Yes, and indeed. if you're like Shayla and I and you – are stuck on these things that you know is going to work and you don't want to see the lesson as to why it's not working, <laughs> you're <laughs> going to be on a long-term journey like we both have been. But, okay, so I'm going to let Shayla finish um, her story because I'm going to share a little bit of mine as well because it's it's like we're parallel, Shayla. Oh, my God. Like, see, this is why we quit. This is why we connected, like, more on a personal level on LinkedIn than just yes. professional. Okay, so the, keep going with your story. Keep going. So um, my transition really came, um, and I should say my aha moment or my epiphany or my eye-opening moment came um, when I was literally at rock bottom of business. Like, um, entrepreneurship, like um, Renita said, is up and down. It's a journey. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I had gotten to a place where it's like I couldn't do anything else. Like, I just came out of a failed business. Um, that I actually paid people to work in. So now I'm out of money. <laughs> um, I've come out of money. I've, you know, paid people. I've had to let everybody go. I had to dissolve a business, which was just embarrassing in general. Um, then I jumped into something else that I still had a passion for, which is helping women, um, and invested in myself through a coach, um, also through a, um, a airplane ticket, a business trip, and um, came home to just be like, this is just not it. This is just going nowhere, and I don't understand why. And so I cried for three days, 
literally cried. I got angry. I cried. I like went through the stages of grief. Like, and um, it, was, it was just crazy. And I couldn't understand why it wasn't working. And finally, I prayed. And um, again, I've had a relationship with God forever. Um, been in church, known who God is, um, you know, made him the head of my life. But I wasn't living in relationship with him. And so at this point, you know, what do you do? You know, we get, um, you know, in trouble and things fall apart. If that's your, your lifestyle, then, you know, that's kind of the go-to thing when everything is at the bottom is go to God. And so that's what I did. And I said, simply, God, I don't understand. Why is this not working? What is wrong? Everybody around me is being successful. Everybody's saying you can do this. And if you take these steps, and I had been hustling, I had been doing the work, I had been putting in the time, I had been doing the promotions and everything, marketing and, you know, having the groups and having the webinars and free this and the free gifts and the sign all up for this. I had been that doing it all. Be doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I had been doing everything. And so I said, I can't say it for the lack of trying or because I'm lazy. I've been doing the work. And so why is this not working out for me in my favor um, financially? financially or emotionally, like my emotions and my temperament um, when I'm doing business is important to me. And it's not about being stuck in your feelings, but it's about being happy with the work that you're doing. If you're not happy and you're miserable, like when you go to fast food and people have an attitude, like it brings down your whole mood. And I don't want to be responsible for changing other people's mood because I'm miserable in what I'm doing and I'm just doing it for the money. So that's not me. And so I, I was having emotional unstab- um, instability and financial <laughs> instability uh, because you know, I'm doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing. And so finally, simple as day, I heard it loud and clear. God said, you forgot about me. I said, wait a minute, what you mean? We've been riding since I was four. I didn't forget about you. What do you mean? And he said it again. You forgot about me. You didn't make me first. You didn't include me. And I was like, well, wait a minute, God. When I was talking about starting the business in 2015, the membership business, I said, hey, God, you know, what should I do? Should I put you or should I just, you know, let people know I believe in you, but that's not what the business is about? Like, I included you. We were talking about it, remember? (laughs) No, we didn't talk. You asked me a question. And you and made up you your mind it. what you wanted it. <laughs> yes, ask and answer on your own. No no further questions, Your Honor. That's what that was about. And then I started <laughs> to get it. it. It was clear to me then that um, I had compromised. And since I had compromised, I had failed. Not once, but twice, back to back in less than six months. I had failed in two different businesses. Um, and so at that point, I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be unhappy. I'm not going to stress myself about making money that's just simply not going to be made because I'm not doing it the right way. And um, I think the total time was about a month, maybe a month and a half before I really sprang back. And there was some, you know, when I got that epiphany, I don't want people to think that it's just, oh, God, you know, let you know that you forgot about him. You put him back in place and everything was all roses. And it wasn't. Um, there is, I believe, this is my personal belief, there's a penalty to pay for disobedience. Um, if you are a kingdom person, if you are um, following after God's heart, there's a penalty to pay for disobedience, and you will pay that penalty. Um, in what form or what time frame it comes in, it's going to be between you and God. But um, I, I had to sit out of the game, I, I guess I'll say it like that, for a little bit of time to where um, I couldn't get straight still on what it was exactly I was supposed to do. Um, but that's when I turned to prayer. And um, prayer has always been a solid in my life, but it's something that I have had struggle with doing, being disciplined doing um, on a regular basis, not just those drive-by prayers. You know, I would get my scripture from Facebook, scripture of the day, and somebody would put a prayer from Joel Osteen online, and that would be my prayer and my scripture for the day. Um, and so I was doing the drive-by thing. But um, when I got she serious about <laughs> – Yes, just real quick, let me just grab this and go fast food type of prayer. Um, but when I, I got serious and said, okay, this is going to be my way of escape. Nothing else is working. And God said, you know, you left me out. Well, how can I put you back in? How can I bring you back? How can I build that relationship? And um, my belief is through prayer. Prayer is the intimate connection, the time we get to talk to God and spend with God and hear from him and not just requesting things from him, but also to have a uh, two-way conversation with him. And so I pray com was born out of that. Never in a million years would I be promoting prayer that I think. Would I be uh, promoting anything to do with learning how to pray and learning how to create a more intimate connection with God through prayer? That was never on my mind. Um, but that's what came out of uh, me shutting down business, or I should say God shut me down. <laughs> he closed my business. Um, Not once, but twice. <laughs> twice. 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 Um, in less than six months. And um, my praying, and that's what I did because that was the only thing I could do. Like, I still felt 
you know, once I got clear information from him, I still felt like, you know, in a kind of a low place, but I felt relieved that I knew what was going on because, you know, human nature is to want to know why or why is this happening or why is this not happening. And mm-hmm. so I knew then, um, and it, I mean, what can I say against it? It was the truth. I thought he was included, but if I really sit and think about it, and no, I made all those decisions and all those moves in my business without consulting with him the proper way. Um, and again, this is this could be different for other people, but um, as a kingdom focused woman, um, this this is what was missing. And so once I started to pray, I could hear him. I got clarity. I spent sometimes two hours on the floor crying and praying, crying and praying, to where my kids are knocking on the door, saying, "Mom, you okay?" And my husband had to shoo him away and like she's in there praying, she's okay, and you know because they've never seen me like that. That, um, to that to that extent. And so it was serious business because I want to get it right. I want to live my purpose. I know I have a purpose and I want to do that. And entrepreneurship is my heart and I want to do that as well, but I want to do it the right way. And so now um, to sum it all up, I'm doing that and so many things are flowing. Um, ideas are coming, things that I haven't mentioned because it's not time yet. And I'm very... Um, cautious about that and I really I, I you know I'll sit here and have a conversation out loud in the house by myself to God saying okay God you know this is the idea I had um and I don't second guess and I write things down as soon as I hear it from him and I know I heard it um I write it down because you know things happen the enemy gets in there and tries to make it like no you didn't hear that that's not what he, you know you're crazy that's not a good idea you can't do that you, you'll fail again you know so I write things down and say this was from God I heard it write it down so then when I get so um, moments of um, inconsistency or un- unsurety, I go back and I look at my notes. Um, and so I have a book that I'm working on now, um, and it's all from God, just to say, you know, it's all God-centered, um, and I know I'm doing it the right way, and I feel no stress, no stress in business. And I don't think there's very many people um, in business that can say they're not stressed or they don't worry about the next thing that's to come or they don't worry about yeah. being profitable. I've already been profitable in the first thing that I've launched, Um in business, and I was so proud of that. Um, I opened 30 spots. I only filled seven, but I tell you, that was the happiest seven only, (laughs) um, (laughs) you know, thing that I've done because in the previous business, it was all about filling out these, you know, programs. And if you didn't fill your program, that was a failure because in business, you got to fill the seats. You got to fill the seats. And, you know, I did it from my heart. The people that are in this program currently are there because they're supposed to be. um, And I feel so good about it. I just, I can't even explain. It makes me almost want to cry now because I'm doing it authentically and I'm not stressed and I know I'm on the right path. Um, And it may seem slow to some, but this is like a big burst. This is more, um, beneficial and more profitable than what I was doing before. And I had a client that was paying probably seven times more than what the people to be in this one little class have paid. But I feel the so much like better the, about this. The thing is, like like you said, everyone is so worried about they have to fill all the seats that they don't take advantage of. I got some people here. Let me do my very best with these people yes. so that it, Give it can your all. grow. So so many times people are looking, and this is a transparent moment, not just for us, but for everyone listening. Sometimes you're looking at, I didn't meet my goal, because I was there myself when I had a a, a, a virtual training I did. I didn't meet my goal. However, the people who did sign up, I wanted to give them my all. And yes. I mean, if you if you guys listen to episode three, I talked about that particular uh, virtual training because, you know, it was storming like it is right now, you know, here in Houston. It's like nonstop raining here. You know, the Internet was coming in and out. People were texting and messaging me. They couldn't hear. They couldn't see. It was a horrible, horrible experience. But I went and I provided some things for them um, because I felt bad that they didn't get what they had paid for. And so, like what Shayla is saying, even though she may have only gotten seven out of her 30 spots, however, she is pouring into them because what you give out, you get back exponentially. So you can't be selfish and say, oh, I didn't get all 30, so I'm only going to half do it. Well, then you're going to get by way less than half of what you put, you know, what you've given to them, what you get back. My very first fusion event. Six people showed up. My sister and I decorated that room. We had a sushi bar. I mean, this is, you know, Fusion is an intimate conversation event, a.k.a. networking for those who don't know what intimate conversation means. 
we had a sushi bar, we had all this stuff, and those ladies came in and they were like, wow. And then we created a video for each one of them to promote their business. Um, so, I mean, we went above and beyond for those six women. Guess what? When I hosted, um, when I started the tour, we were selling out because we gave everything to those six women who showed up. So don't take yep. for granted the few people who who support you in the beginning. Give them everything. You want to yes. give them everything and then some. Um, to go off of what, what Shayla was saying about the, the wake-up call, I had a 12-week pro, or 13-week program that I had started uh, December 2015. Because uh, I, I was leaving, you know, transitioning from leaving Women Are Game Changers. For those who don't know that story, that's episode seven in season one. And I felt like, oh, I should do group programs. You know, I was a teacher in public schools. I taught on the college level. I'm a teacher. I can do this, right, Shayla? Yep. So yep. I have this program. <laughs> and I had people, and guess what? Every spot I wanted filled was filled. So I'm I'm feeling great. Week two, I get up to do our weekly call, and I'm like, shoot, I don't want to do this anymore. (laughs) This is the second week of the program, okay? (laughs) These women are like, they signed up, and in three days, I created the whole program. First, I wanted to see if there was interest. There wasn't just interest. I filled every single spot. So then I had to create a program in three days. So I contacted people by Thursday. All spots were filled by Friday. I finished the workbook. Saturday, I finished the recording. Sunday, it was ready to go out because I told them Sunday they were going to receive their first email. So I'm hustling, creating this program. Second week, I wake up and I'm like, I don't really want to do this anymore. I I don't think this is what I want to do. (laughs) So I was like, I'm not going to quit on these ladies because they believed in me. This was this was supposed to be the anchor for my new business, so I'm going to stick it out. What they did not know they did for me was they really helped me w- to get where I am now. During that 12 or 13 week program, I keep saying 12, I don't know why. During that program, the the idea for this podcast came because one of the ladies said, you know. Well, have you thought of doing a podcast? Because I was planning another national tour. On this very topic, the the tour was called A Toast to Truth. And it was going to be where we have conversations, right what I'm doing on the podcast. I said, no. You know, in three days, I put together this podcast. um, I found guests. Like, literally within two weeks from idea to everything being done, and I'm uploading it on Lipson for my RSS feed, I had a podcast done. That came from those ladies. Um, And then I created this workbook, and one of the ladies was like, oh, I could never do anything like this. This is amazing. I love it. I love the the, how you have it structured and all this stuff. And none of them knew I was working on creating my own journal. And so just listening to them every week as we talked in our weekly call, they helped me formulate my journal that you all are going to be able to purchase, um, you know, this summer. So even though I knew that 12-week, 13-week coaching program was not going to be the anchor of my business, what it did was birth this podcast and birth my journal and birth what I'm really supposed to be doing. So don't take for granted the things that didn't work out. Like Shayla said, you know, sometimes Mm -hmm. you don't get the lesson because you're frustrated you have to work through that frustration. That's why I said that's my popping bubbly moment. I understand now that you have to go through those emotions because if you don't, you're not going to get that lesson that's going to move you to the next stage of where you're supposed to be. So yep. that, that's, that's like my little, my little personal thing. But, yeah, I, I've been there. I, I've, even to this, to this day, I've been trying to force, you know, virtual trainings, webinars, all this stuff. And I'm like, even though I'm a teacher, doesn't mean I have to, quote, unquote, do things that fall in that realm. Just like Shayla. Shayla is great at at putting things together, getting people together, the membership program. All that stuff is in her talent base, but it doesn't mean that opportunity was for her to do. Just like me and these virtual trainings, webinars, whatever you want to call them. 
even though I kill them when I'm on there because I'm a very effective teacher, that's not that's not the opportunity for me. And so I'm not going to – I can't take all these online experts saying, you do a webinar to fill up your, your email list. That doesn't work for me. You know what's crazy? I'm getting people signing up on my email list just by posting every single day. This is what you're going to get in your inbox twice a week. Okay, so that's working for me. You have to find yes. what works for you. That, that's exactly. a very transparent moment because for someone to say they're a teacher but they can't do webinars, you know, they can't have sold <laughs> out webinars, that's a very transparent moment there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, Shayla and I have had a great conversation. I mean, there's so much more we could talk about on – on this topic in particular, man, this is such a great um, topic, and we didn't get to everything. And I and I think that's I think that's for a reason. I always tell people, you know, conversations happen the way they need to. And I think the story that Shayla shared was the one you all needed to hear because a lot of us go through that. We we feel so frustrated that things aren't working that we go and start a new business or start a new product project program. That's almost similar to what we just left. So we didn't get the we didn't yep. get the message the first time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and we keep going. So so to to go back to our question, can being too transparent ruin your your reputation? It can if you let it. Like Shayla said, if you if you bleed, if you bleed all over people, if you if you just keep putting it out there while you're hurting. Shayla went yes. in for two weeks. She went in. She didn't post online. She went in and she worked through it and then she came back out and now she's able to share. Now that transparency is coming from a place of healed healing and it's going to help someone else. So you have to be careful on how you're sharing your transparency. Are you coming from a place of hurt or are you coming from a place of healing? So Shayla and I are going to do our final toast where we share, you know, kind of what we take away. Okay, so my final toast for this episode, gosh, I mean, Shayla gave so, so much um, great insight. But my takeaway from this episode is, do not keep repeating the same pattern that didn't work the first time. Find the lesson, because <laughs> I was there. I have been there multiple times. Find the lesson and learn that lesson. Because even though we talked about, you know, like the emotional part of it, and Shayla talked about the financial part a little bit, what people don't get is if you do not learn that lesson, you're going to end up losing a lot more money than you realize because you're not paying attention to the things that you're quote unquote investing in that didn't work mm-hmm. the first time. You know, just because you tweaked it doesn't mean it's always going to work if it failed miserably the first time. Now, if it, you yes. know, there's a, a difference between tweaking something to make it work and then it totally flopping and there's no coming back from it. You know, like, I don't want to take that Beyonce line, but, you know, ash to ash. You know, dust to things that didn't work out. I'm not going to say dust to dust, but dust to things that don't work out. Got to let it go. Got to let it go. So that's my final toast. Learn the lesson from something that did not work out. Shayla, what's your final toast? Um, I I think the main one, and this has been amazing, like I love the fact that I can have a conversation um, and learn something in the process. It's not just me sharing what I've learned through my own things, but just having an open conversation and, gosh, somebody else has dealt with this. It's not just me. And I think when I got clear on that in my life and business, my my world, everything just flowed much better. Um, being authentic, I think, is key. Um, everybody's probably not going to be able to be transparent on a level um, that maybe myself or Vernita are. Um, so to know that just because you're not telling every bad thing that happened, even if you are at a healed place, doesn't make you, um, you know, that's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, some people are just better um, in the position of telling their truth um, in the fashion where it will help someone. Uh, but just being yourself is um, the big takeaway. Um, and that comes in different forms. Um, being yourself 
first is for you to be true to yourself. And it doesn't, again, like I said, mean that you have to just put it all out there. Um, but if you're just yourself, you're going to automatically attract the right people to you, whether it's for business, something you need in your life personally. Um, it could be as a single person. You being yourself, you're going to attract that right um, man, um, or if it's a man listening, a woman, or whatever, um, to you because you're being you. So at the end of the day, if I had just been true to myself, and my truth is what's number one to me, again, is my faith. So if had I been true to that, um, I wouldn't have made the mistake of going into a business um, and compromising it the way I did and then just trying to hop to the next thing. Um, so at the end of the day, if I could say anything overall is be yourself, be authentic, be true to you, who you are and what you believe, and then the rest will flow the rest will take care of itself i i like that i mean it when you said hop from the next one uh, that's something a lot of us do a lot of us hop yes. around um and and that's because we don't know who we are and oh my god i mean like shayla is just sharing so much because we're talking about who you are versus what you do in episode eight so here Shayla is sharing all this insight on <laughs> other episodes that are coming up, and she doesn't even know it. So you guys have to stay <laughs> with with season two because we have so much coming up. But, you know, this has been a Toast of Truth with Bernadette Arfrini, that's me, chatting it up with my good friend Shayla Smart about can being too transparent ruin your reputation. So thank you guys for listening.